Well, praise the Lord, and thank you for tuning in to Word of Deliverance. Um, I'm Melanie Bitimo, and we also have... Mark McComas. And Michelle Patton. Thank you again for tuning in. It's always an honor to be born again, a child of God, be delivered the true gospel, stay in the scriptures, have the Holy Spirit lead you. There's so many blessings that come from being a born-again believer and a child of the Most High God. We have a wonderful message for you today, and we pray that you get something out of it. If you want to get a pencil and a piece of paper so you can write down some information, take some notes, and also we're going to give you our email address and our address where you maybe can write us a letter. Um, stay in contact with us if you have any questions or maybe concerns or need prayer. That's what we're here for. Michelle, what, you want to tell the people where we're going to begin today with this wonderful message. Amen. We're going to start with um, Luke chapter 1, verses 50. And this is Mary she, and her prophecy and how she prophesied, basically, because the Lord had came and blessed her. And to I mean to have Jesus, to birth Jesus, the Son of God, I mean, that's a real blessing. I mean, I mean, hey, <laughs> you get the Son of God. and But she was... Um, prophesying here and through the I believe through the Holy Spirit and it says that in verse 50 and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation mm -hmm. and a lot of people take God's mercy for granted a lot of times and they s go out and say oh well God's forgiven me you know God forgave me I'm saved by grace through faith and God's mercy is upon me he's merciful but then they continue to go out there and do the same thing over and over and over and over again thinking they're in God's mercy mm -hmm. but his mercy is upon them that fear him from generation to generation. Amen. Can we tell the, the listeners today a little bit why she started to prophesy? Or maybe what the angel had appeared unto her and told her these things, to maybe to let the listeners know what brought about this great prophecy. There was an angel that appeared unto Mary and told her she was blessed and had found favor in the Lord with God. And the the angel had told her in this Luke chapter 1 verse 31 the angel said thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end so to me, them words alone right there was some powerful dynamite words spoken unto her. And in return, she said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. She was rejoicing because she had stated how God had chosen her. We stated on our previous program of her being a low person, being of a low estate, maybe a poor person, very humble. Maybe nobody even knew her, but yet how God had chose her. And again, this great prophecy, which is so dynamite and so powerful, I believe yet is so overlooked. How many people even talk about Mary? Um, you have many doctrines that don't even listen to a woman speak. Um, so I think that even with this little chapter or a few verses of her prophesying was some dynamite, powerful stuff. Where else did you want to take us with that? I know you've mentioned verse 50, mm -hmm. how... His mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Amen. How many people fear God? Very few. How many people truly fear the Lord? We know that in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, it says, uh, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, mm -hmm. and a knowledge of the holy is understanding. And so if you want to have the fear of the Lord, that's the beginning of wisdom right there and to turn away from your sins. Amen. Not for you to say, oh, God saved me. I just confess with my mouth and God saved me and go back into living like the devil. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not going to get you saved. You yes. cannot try to claim that, oh, God's grace and mercy. People, a, lot of, a lot of people today that are out there in the world, even in the churches, they like to have that title Christian. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus, but they don't believe from their hearts. Right. Because if they believe from their heart, they would fear God and they would obey the Bible. Amen. Brother Mark? Well, you know, and, and we're talking about the fear of God, and we can see an example of, of Mary prophesying, and 
Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, it says, But fools despise wisdom and instruction. They despise to hear this instruction of the fear of the Lord and how it can save us and, and how we are to look to Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. And, you know, we'll point out some more things in this, in this great prophecy of, of Mary and what she brought forth. So we understand that we all need to, to, you know, dig down deep. We need to pray and be able to find the fear of the Lord. You know, the fear of the Lord saves us from many entrapments and many snares. Mm -hmm. And one of them snares is the rich, being uh -huh. rich and seeking those things. Amen. Amen. I like it because we can go to verse 51, how mm -hmm. this has a lot to do, I think, which is the opposite of verse 50. Yes. Verse 50 is talking about them that fear the Lord. You know, and God's mercy is upon them that fear him. Mm -hmm. And also it says in Psalms 25, 14, it says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. So when you fear the Lord, you repent of your sins and you get in covenant with God. Hey, that's who God is going to have his covenant with is them that fear him. Amen. Not these people in verse 51. Michelle, you want to tell us about them? Yes, it says he hath shown strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts and we know that the imaginations is very evil because that's where satan works is through their imaginations mm -hmm. that's his playground that's where he manip manipulates people he's able to work witchcraft and enchantments on people and enchantment is if you find look in isaiah chapter 47 it talks about the word enchantments is talking about society and and how they're able to uh, charm a whole society mm -hmm. and if you look in and that comes from 2267 in the hebrew mm -hmm. and in strong's concordance and if you look in 2266 it tells you how he they use these enchantments and it talks about through fellowship yes. through associating yourself with these people mm -hmm. and getting in league with them and, and fellowshipping with them uh -huh. and the bible says that you cannot first corinthians chapter 10 you can't drink from the cup of the lords and the cup of the devils mm -hmm. and that word devil is talking about daimon mm -hmm. and it's a distributor of fortunes amen and so they satan works through the imaginations of people's minds mm -hmm. and then it talks about in genesis chapter 6 verse 5 where had god has saw the wickedness and imaginations of man was con evil continually and romans 1 tells you all about it and how they were evil in their imaginations. In verse 21, it says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their heart, foolish heart was darkened. Mm -hmm. And it talks about that word vain, talks about profitless, yes. worthless. Mm -hmm. And it talks about morally wicked. wicked. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And as you're, you're stating this about people's minds and going along and, and being fellowship in fellowship with these devils and not knowing that these devils are the ones distributing the fortunes. To me, this is great wisdom that should put the fear of God in you. So you know what to turn away from rapidly. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think of this, this parable or the words of Jesus spoken over in Luke chapter 16, verse 13. Anybody know what that says off by hand? That's the one that talks about no man, no servant can serve two, two masters. masters. Mm -hmm. yeah. For either he'll hate the one and love the other. You remember, what does it say, Brother Mark? And no man can serve God and what? And mamma, you know, that's Luke 16, 13. Mm -hmm. He says you're going to hate the one and cleave to the other. It says no man can serve God and mamma. So, you know, as, as we're seeing here, this prophecy being, being brought forth, and even it says scatter the proud in their imaginations of their heart. If you look at this word scatter, it means to to wino, W-I-N-N-O-W, and this means um, like the, the chaff that's in the wheat and, and when they, they sift it and the wind blows the chaff out. And the only way that we can have our minds dealt with is with the Holy Ghost fire and with Jesus cleaning us up. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that that could be dealt with, like Matthew 3.11 with the Holy Ghost fire clean our minds up. If not, you're going to be off into your mind, your imagination, even what Michelle shared with you in, in Romans 1 and Genesis 6. You're going to fall into this pitfall. You're going to fall into this trap of going with what they teach you and, and what they perceive as great riches, which is money to them. And you know what? A lot of proud people are saying, oh, I could do it. God, God can trust me with money. God knows my heart. God knows I wouldn't do that. God knows this. God knows that. 
to me, that's being lifted up in pride and deceiving yourself. If God is showing us all these scriptures in the Bible about the opposite of money, what we should do opposed to seeking riches, we're supposed to seek God first. That's what right. is our Bible? If God gave this, every inspiration, every scripture is inspired by God, right? It's given to us for a reason, right? Amen. So if God's telling us you can't serve God and mammon or riches or materialistic type of stuff, to me, he's stating that because something will happen if we try to. Mm -hmm. Michelle, there's a scripture that's over in Matthew chapter 13 yes. that talks about these riches. Verse 22, it says, He also that received seed among thorns, that's the word of God, is he that, the seed is the word, mm -hmm. is he that heareth the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and that he becometh unfruitful. Mm -hmm. There's one scripture, I can't pinpoint exactly where it's stated, but it says pride becomes before the fall. Mm -hmm. Many people are lifted up in pride and thinking that they're so strong and mighty and getting God's will or getting man's will or man's mindset mixed up with God's. Amen. And pride comes from the imagination. It does. And it says that in Romans chapter 1, it says um, that they had worshipped the creature more than the creator, who was blessed forever. Amen. And it says, for this cause, because they did this, God gave them up to vile affections. For even the woman to change the natural use of the nature, which is against nature, and also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burnt you know, in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And it says in verse 28, and that even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which are not convenient. Mm -hmm. And so you see all this LGBT movement mm -hmm. coming out here today, and all the with them coming saying that oh yes the children should be able to choose whether ge gender they should what they want to be and it's all through the imagination it of is. men and Satan is working through their imaginations. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know as you mentioned those things with you know such as the LGBT and these different things and we have to understand who's supporting it, these kind of movements you know we have to understand that somebody's lobbying somebody's paying for these types of things to come forth and me personally i know it's these rich men that are behind the scenes that are giving this money to fund these types of protests and fund this types of financial support through the media so they can get their agenda across you know and, and brainwash as we shared with sorcery as michelle had shared with that that enchantment 2267 in the hebrew it works on a whole society so they get these out outlets through television, they get these outlets through coming to a church and, and trying to evangelize these things. So we got rich, we got the LGBT movement, we got all these things doing it and it's sourced by the devil, of course, but you have the rich man behind it and proud of their imaginations mm -hmm. and don't fear God. And this is what we see coming forth. And we have many examples in the Bible about being uh, against the mind and the imagination and against riches. And if you read in 1 Timothy 6, 9, he says, But they that will be rich fall into many temptations and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men and destruction and perdition so my question to you is why would you want to even link up with these things it says you're going to fall into many temptations a sneer many foolish and hurtful lust it says that you're going to be uh, into destruction and perdition why would you want to link yourself with with such things and another thing with with the mind I said a lot of people are getting a seared conscience because they're listening to these doctrines. They're listening to the doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. I say check the word of God out. Check what we're saying. Email us. Call us. Write us. Come visit us. We will sit down with you and we'll go precept upon precept and line upon line. And we'll show you as we're doing now that we have biblical proof that will help people to be set free. Jesus says, continue in my words, so you shall be called my disciples, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The problem is, we don't have people continuing in the doctrine. They're creating their own doctrines that are brought forth by seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil. Amen. It made me think of like this religious sect that's going across the world, S-E-C-T, sect. These groups of people that pretends, pretends that 
that they're so holy and so righteous and that, oh, we know the Bible, we know about the blood moons, and we know about this, we know about that. Obviously, they don't know about anything of the word of God. They don't know anything about the Holy Spirit. They don't know anything about Jesus Christ because if they did, they themselves would be a doer of the word and not be a hypocrite of the word. In that same example, in that Luke 16, 14, this is speaking unto the Pharisees, and I believe these Pharisees are a religious group of people which are the same ones today in our church world society but portray themselves to be so holy you can find that in Matthew chapter 23 when Jesus is speaking unto them these are the same people that are lifted up in the church world you know what they do that are so prideful they justify their actions they justify their reasons they justify everything but you know what the Jesus called them out and said to them in this Luke 16 15 ye are they which do justify yourselves before men you it says but God knoweth your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of the Lord. And it, you know, just makes me think of these proud people. Over in Proverbs, it talks about these people that are lifted up in pride, how God looks at them. They're an abomination unto the Lord. They can do no good. They know not how to do good. All that is in them, my opinion, is wickedness, greedy, covetous, wanting more, deceiving, being deceived. And you know what the Bible also says? I'll give you one more scripture before I share the, um, share the mic, so to say, with them. There's one more scripture in Proverbs 16, 19. It says, better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Something about the proud people like we stated according to Romans chapter 1. Even again in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, what brought the flood about was man's mind. They're lifted up in their imaginations, and they become proudful and prideful to where they think that maybe they're saved, but they're not. They're so far away from the truth in Jesus Christ that is, is very sad. But our Bible tells us again about better it is to be of a humble spirit than to divide all these riches and the spoil with the proud. It shows you of how the world is. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19, it tells you six things that the Lord hates, and seven are an abomination unto him. And it says, a proud look, and these people are proud, rich. It says, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, they mm -hmm. shed innocent blood. Yes. And a, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Mm -hmm. And it says, feet that swift that be swift and running to mischief. They're always running to mischief. They're always running to mischief. And it says, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. And so we know that these people, that's exactly what they're doing today. They spread their lies. They have their false witness. And what they do is they kill innocent people and then blame other people for their doings mm -hmm. and false, bringing false ac accusations against people. Mm -hmm. And then they sow discord. They send their minions into the churches to sow discord among the brethren and to keep people from knowing the truth. Mm -hmm. you, you know, even with uh, as we share these things, and in Proverbs it gives you uh, an example of what happens when you don't listen. Wisdom says, I cry if it out. Wisdom is crying out to you and trying to help you out, but when you reject it, when you don't listen to it, bad things happen. He says in verse 26, he says, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. God's given everybody an opportunity to see these things, to enlighten you, to help you. But if you reject him, there's going to be a time and a place where we all know we're going to stand before God uh, the judgment seat of Christ, or, or you're going to stand there where you see if your name's written in the book of life, and you potentially going to to the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. And he says in verse 29, it says, "For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord." And I'm not going to continue to read, but the verse I wanted to share goes again with riches. And he says in verse 32, "For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them." So here we see again here prosperity, riches. It's going to destroy. 
You're going to be a fool and you're going to be destroyed by these things. We don't put our trust in uncertain riches because they fly away as a, as a bird flies away unto heaven. Mm -hmm. We put our trust in God and we seek him and we expose these devils out here that's trying to say that we need to have riches and we expose these people that want to support LGBT agenda. We expose these abominations that they're turning the morals of our country around and away from God. This is the problem we have. Nobody fears God. Nobody has no godly morals these, these last hours. Yeah, and, and you know the sad thing about it today is that you have... Um, Christians, so-called Christians and teachers teaching children to live through their imagination, mm -hmm. saying, oh, you need to imagine, use your imagination, mm -hmm. which is totally against our Bible. And we know that the Bible says um, the imagination works basically is the same thing as the carnal mind. Mm -hmm. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, it says, for to be carnally, carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the laws of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. And you know what? Sometimes for believing the way we do, people make fun of us. Remember you <laughs> was talking about that scripture in the same place where we were in Luke chapter 16, where God says you can't serve God and mammon? What did, what did the people say after Jesus had told them that? Well, you know, uh, he says in verse 14, And the Pharisees also were covetous, heard of these things, and derided him. This means basically to snare their nose up, mock you, and laugh at you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we see here that people, were, you know, may mock us or, or may laugh at us, but that's okay as long as we're bringing the truth out in the word of God. God and the Holy Spirit's the one that's going to give an increase. We're just a vessel, and we're just doing what we have to do for God. Amen. And, you know, what does the Bible say about imaginations? We use the one in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, which brought God's judgment upon man because they lived out of their imaginations and they so to say waxed evil evil and evil and if you see the society today that we're living in mm -hmm. maybe there might not be another flood but i tell you what jesus is coming and the fire of his mouth is going to consume them if you're not on the side of jesus christ if you're not born again filled with the holy spirit in the word sealed with the word of god you're going to be destroyed okay because there's going to be a shaking coming it says in hebrews chapter 12 that our god is a consuming fire and those of you who are not in his kingdom will be shaken because there's going to come a shaking and a great shaking and those things that can be shaken will be removed Amen. but if you're in that kingdom the kingdom of god you're going to stand forever Amen. what does our bible state that we should do when it comes to the word imaginations according to the bible i'm sticking with our bible yes. Second okay. Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Now, this is for the born-again believers, right? Yes. Now, to let you know that you can be born again, the day of salvation, the Lord is at hand. Us preaching to you and telling you about the Lord and telling you about the true gospel, it's available unto you, and you can get in covenant with Jesus Christ today. If you make a commitment and say, Lord, forgive me my sins, I repent in the name of Jesus. I humble myself before you, Father, and I ask and pray that you forgive me my sins. I ask and pray that you fill me with your Holy Spirit. And Lord God, I realize that being in covenant with you, I'm in covenant with the Bible, Lord, and I will obey your scriptures. Fill me with your word. Fill me with your spirit, Father God, and I'll keep your word all the days of my life. If you made that, now we're going to tell you how that you war against the devil, Amen. how you war against imaginations. Mm -hmm. You know that imaginations is something we fight against. It's not something that we submit to. It's something that we fight against mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Michelle, Amen. tell us how we do this. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting with verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to okay. pulling down the strongholds. Our weapons. Yes. That's our instruments that we use to fight in this warfare amen they're not carnal we don't do it with our carnal mind or in right. the flesh how do we do it they're mighty through god so the power of the holy ghost which mm -hmm. gives us this ability to fight against imaginations this mm -hmm. comes only by being born again saved the natural man can't do this amen the unsafe man can't do this amen the a man that the best that they can do is live at through their imagination. That's all they know. That's all they can do. Yeah, all they know is the works of the flesh, which consists of drinking, cussing, fornication, those type of things. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this imagination and how important it is that we as Christians know that we cast that devil down in the name of Jesus. We cast his thoughts down. And if you go back to, to Luke chapter 1, verses 50 through 51, he says, and 
the mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Jesus' powers never went nowhere. It's, uh, God is a faithful, God, and in his covenant to a thousand generations. And we see here he has showed his strength with his arm. We see here that Jesus is showing us that he has put the devil, he has cast him down, everything is, is subject to the name of Jesus. And we see here this is how you deal with the imagination being filled with the Holy Spirit except in Jesus and when that devil tries to talk to your mind we bind him in the name of Jesus and we cast him down and if you look further it goes down it says first we see here we're dealing with the imagination what leads next after the imagination is being mighty it's being exalted and it's dealing with riches so it all comes through the mind amen and the Bible says in 2nd Corinthians 10 5 casting down imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. And we have to bring into captivity mm -hmm. every thought into the obedience of Christ. So when Satan comes through your imaginations and tries to put a thought, an evil thought in your mind, you have to cast it down, bring it into captivity, and say, Satan, it is written. This is the word. This, your sword is the, your word is the sword, mm -hmm. which Satan, and it's the rhema that brings back the Holy Spirit brings back Rhema to, to your remembrance so you can fight against that devil when he comes to you and tries to put those evil thoughts. Say, Satan, it is written, you know, and through the scripture. You mm -hmm. fight through the scriptures. Amen. And, and I think it's pretty good because if you look at Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about our armor. And part of our armor is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We have the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. So we have to have our mind protected. And also we have to have the word of God as our sword to fight the devil off when he wants to try to throw things at us. And you know what? Again, we cannot state it enough. I know we're talking about Mary's prophecy, but we want to tell you again, I can't help but state it enough, about the importance of the Holy Ghost. Acts 1.8. And if people want to say that the Holy Ghost is this or that and the other, let me stick with my Bible and let me tell you what the Holy Ghost is about. The Holy Ghost is about, according to John 14, 26, to teach us all things and bring all things are to our remembrance, like Michelle said, the rhema. And that's the word of God once it's in us. That's our sword, part of our sword, that the Lord activates and brings to our remembrance to fight against the devil. And let me tell you one more scripture, Acts 1.8. It tells you the power of the Holy Ghost, and that power alone talks about a miraculous power, a miracle itself. Don't you think that somebody being born again, how God can even raise a beggar? Maybe you feel like you've been the lowest person. Maybe you feel like you've been a nobody in this world. Well, guess what? Great. You can be somebody for Jesus Christ. You can be born again, saved, delivered, and you can start getting into your Bible and become a vessel and an instrument for the Lord at maybe preaching his gospel, maybe sharing God's word, helping the poor, encouraging somebody, fasting and praying. To me, that's a miracle in itself, how God can even take a poor person and exalt him up to be into the body of Christ. Amen. And just like how... He used Mary. She mm -hmm. was a poor nobody. And he used Mary to bring forth Jesus, the Amen. Son of God. Mm -hmm. And I believe God can use each and every person there that is out there that is poor. He uses people like you. Mm -hmm. He uses the nobodies, the little nobodies that have nothing. Amen. He uses you and gives you great power to overcome Satan, to overcome lust and the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. And it helps you to be somebody great, like you said, in the eyes of God mm -hmm. and not in the eyes of men. Amen. And there's a scripture where it's in First Timothy. Timothy chapter 6 that talks about godliness con with contentment is great gain. Yes, yes first. Being content with the Lord. Amen. And our time is up. Didn't it go quick? Yes. We pray that you enjoyed this program. If you want more information, please let us know. You can email at us. Email us at Pastor Inman, I-N-M-A-N, -N, at att.net, or write us a letter, 518 Pleasant Valley, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. Our prayer doors are always open if you want to write a letter or call in for prayer or email us for prayer, we will do it. We pray that you enjoyed it again, and thank you for tuning in to Word of Deliverance and Deeper Studies.